Another important writer in the genre of uh, behavioral scientists is Herbert A. Simon. As I have mentioned, his ideas are gleaned from two major sources. He wrote an article known as Proverbs of Public Administration. And the second major contribution, this was a short essay. And the second contribution is his magnum opus, Great Quirk the title of which is Administrative Behavior, subtitle Theory of Decision Making in Administrative Organizations. In the first write-up, which is about proverbs of administration, Simon frontally attacks the classical theory, particularly the proverbs of the principles of administration, and he says that these principles are nothing better than proverbs. The metaphor of proverbs is used by him there are so many kinds of proverbs. Sometimes there are proverbs which are having e opposite meaning. Haste is waste. Thus he has uh, disputed the validity of principles. Like proverbs, these principles of administration occur in pairs, one opposite the other. If you follow one principle, you have to sacrifice another principle. And any such situation does not warrant something to be called as a principle or the whole body of knowledge as principles. So this was a serious debunking of the principles of administration. Therefore, he was seriously disputing the essential contribution of the classical theory. So therefore, one of his contribution is deconstructionist. He was deconstructing the classical theory by abolishing it, dismantling it. The next is reconstructionist. His idea in demolishing the classical theories contributions, particularly the principles of administration, is not that there cannot be a theory of administration, but a more valid theory of administration has to be founded on behavioral foundations. And for this, he has contributed his own theory known as theory of decision making. Simon says, decision making is the heart of administration. If one were to understand what administration is, the most important focal point would be how decisions in the organization are made. The quality of decisions determine the quality of organization. So therefore, he paraphrased administrative behavior as theory of decision making. Administrative behavior is nothing but the study of decision making. He said, in any decision making, he tried to be little analytical. This approach is also known as empirical and analytical. Let me just mention in passing, the whole behavioral theory is both analytical and also empirical. Analytical in the sense they go to the root elements and try to tell us what it is. Simon says there are three phases in decision making. The first phase of decision making is intelligence phase, P-H-A-S-E. The second phase is design phase. The third phase is choice phase. Now in any typical decision making, these things may not be logically happening in the same sequence. But for our analytical reasons, we may divide decision making into three areas, three steps. The intelligence stage is problem recognition stage. You need a decision. You make a decision only if there is a problem. And proper understanding of problem is important. You should get as much of information about the problem as possible. So you should have a rounded understanding of the problem. This is what is known as the intelligence stage, information gathering stage. The second phase is the design stage. Design stage is one where he says, Simon says, there are many alternatives for decision making. To do anything, there are different alternatives. To design an apparel or to design a piece of artwork or to manufacture something, there are different processes. So there are different alternatives. The second phase, we should weigh all the alternatives. What are the different alternatives? Alternative A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. Your decision making can be efficient. You can have a very good, efficient, rational decision making 
if you can figure out all the alternatives. So identifying alternatives, knowing the details of alternatives is the second phase called design stage. And the third phase is known as choice stage. So from the different alternatives, you select one. And therefore, decision making is a three-step process, intelligence, design and choice stage. And in the choice stage, there is influence of values and facts. He exposes one of the dilemmas of administration. Any administrator while taking decisions will base his decisions on two premises. Premises means foundations. Two considerations to put it more simply. One is the values, the other one is facts. There is somewhere his preferences. Now preference of caste you may say, preference of gender, preference of ideology, preference of region, preference of religion, preference of friendship. You see, there are ever so many things and this fact is well brought out by human relations theory and informal theory of organization. Every human being is not a machine. He has some, you know, human likes and dislikes and all that, biases and all that. So this is one thing that sways your decision. Maybe the decision eventually that you take is weighed by some value considerations. As long as human beings are there, their values are bound to be there. And then second important premise is facts. Now he makes a comparison between values and facts by bringing the analogy of the ends and means. The values are like ends, objectives. The facts are like means. Facts are objective, values are subjective. Facts may be amenable for proof or dispute. Values, there is nothing like a good value or bad value. Values are just values. Now the greatness of Herbert Simon is I think he received Nobel Prize. He's the only contributor that we come across in the whole gamut of thinkers of administration and management and the organization who has received Nobel Prize. Simon received Nobel Prize for his outstanding contributions to decision making. The concern of Simon was to inject as much of rationality as possible into decision making. He was aware that total De rationality in decision making is elusive. He used the concept of bounded rationality. Simon said that rationality is not absolute. Rationality is having some limits. There cannot be 100% rational decision anybody would take. Maybe one limitation is the information limitation. You do not know full well about all the facts to take a decision. But you have to take a decision in time. Decision Delayed is perhaps a decision denied also. You cannot wait for too long. You have to take. And most of the administrators, particularly the public administrators, uh, working in uh, important departments, uh, they, they have no time. They have a pressure of time and they have to take a decision. And therefore, information limitation may be one. Therefore, there is bounded rationality. And there is the problem of values also. The mediation of values. Because of your values, you don't take the real good decision, but you take a decision that satisfies your personal preferences. He said there are two kinds of decisions, routine decisions and non-routine decisions. The routine decisions are repetitive decisions. He said the routine decisions can be mechanized, automated. By automating these decisions, you can ensure rationality. So these are the major ideas of uh, Bernard and Simon who are the essential behavioralists. And uh, these theories have uh, taken administrative theory to a high pedestal. And it has taken them to a pedestal of science. Although Taylor, F.W. Taylor argued that management is a true science. And in his contributions perhaps he did not have enough of this kind to build up the body of administrative theory on scientific lines. Now, some major criticism against uh, the behavioral theory is that perhaps some people believe 
that as long as values are there, you cannot have a totally rational theory of administration. Of course, Simon was very careful in doing that. He, he has cautioned that there is something known as bounded rationality, but he has tried to automate and all that. All those things notwithstanding, it is not possible to develop decision making to a level of absolute science. Just to recap the whole thing uh, which has been done uh, in the course of this module, we have tried to explain what is behavioralism and what is its uh, uh, logical place in the sequence of uh, the evolution of the theories of administration, who are the important contributors to behavioralism, what are the specific contributions of these major thinkers to behavioralism, what is the contribution of behavioralism to the theory of administration and finally some critique some critical points about their validity or otherwise. Thank you once again.